Bonsoir à toutes et à tous. Alors, dans cette ambiance de, de cocktail et de réjouissance auquel nous nous associons, euh, je vous remercie euh, tout d'abord d'être présente. Euh, nous nous réjouissons euh, de ce moment qui nous rassemble euh, autour des artistes euh, exposés par le CNAP. Sous cet intitulé « Refaire attention à l'avenir » qui donne son titre au mur, nous nous exposons pendant toute la foire. Euh, je vous invite à, à rendre visite à ce, cet accrochage si vous ne l'avez déjà vu. Pendant toute la foire, nous présentons pour la troisième année consécutive, à l'invitation de Paris Photo, nous présentons cette fois-ci des acquisitions toutes récentes. Les œuvres de Sébastien Rigui, Carly Steinbrun, Gilberto Duval. So we're going to here present very different acquisitions, the works of Nina, Louise Desnos, qui will, qui will talk to us today. She's in Mexico working. Also, Nina Perez-Glais, Karen Steinbrun, all those works have been bought by CNAP in 2022, and they're representative of our politics of uh, purchase, of um, enriching our collection with new acquisitions. This lively connection that records every year the creation in France and beyond. Donc, c'est une collection singulière. So it's, uh, Sa force, notamment, est celle d'être très représentative de la photographie contemporaine. It's a different collection which is highly representative of contemporary photography through its history and its current um, developments. And this year, we've decided to show a number of works that we were able to acquire through the CNAP's purchasing committee in 2022. And uh, we have chosen a number of works that actually bring you together beyond your differences. So on this wall tonight, what we are suggesting is to talk about photography today, young French photography through a number of artists. Uh, most of them are part uh, of the French National Collection for the first time. So we've made those uh, choices in order to put them on display, emphasizing what uh, unites them in how uh, they approach photography, a strategy, with uh, documentary photography, which is also uh, quite special and different, uh, because artists, photographers, who work not just about the world, but with the world, uh, with this patchy uh, representation, trying to fill the gaps and go and find what is not represented by uh, a mainstream bodies. So those artists who work with their own uh, personal history, what uh, they're concerned about, what impacts them, the issues that matter to them. And that creates this artistic relationship uh, between artists and the community of observers and viewers. They are suggesting a different uh, outlook on the world uh, with a uh, uh, different view um, about this world that we contribute to through our own decisions and actions. They invite us to uh, view the world through images that are being developed over a long period of time because they're the result of long periods of uh, research and creation. Artists, from that point of view, can be seen as uh, researchers in many uh, different aspects, more than one way. I could talk about this further, but it seemed to be very important to share with this idea that um, um, with this current generation of artists that you are representing, the four of you and the five of you, those artists are putting forward counter-narratives. They're asking us to uh, take a different view of the world of 
what is imaginary and consider envisage a future to this uh, world ridden with frictions and which generates anxiety and which has nothing to do with information and communication if only as an act of resistance and that resistance expresses itself mostly through poetry, which is related to the acquisition of knowledge without any dogmas. It doesn't belong to us. As viewers, as observers, we can use this to maybe better act and think in this world to which we contribute through our individual existences and relationships. So what I'd like to do first is to suggest a rule, which I used previously as well with other artists. We'll be talking about the works of the artists that are with us, and I thank them for being present, but I'd like them to speak not just about their own work in the past instance, but about the work of the colleagues that they work with or exhibit with, whether they know each other or not, whether they've met uh, them uh, only this week within CNAP. Uh, it's always hugely interesting to hear artists talk about their own work, but also talk about other people's work. We know that artists usually love other artists. They love engaging with them, engaging in conversations with other artists. So that's what I suggest we do, because who is this not, not here today? She's actually working in Mexico. A few weeks ago, she, she called me and she said, I'm really annoyed. Um, I've been offered a really interesting commission in Mexico. Uh, I'd love to be present at the Felix Knapp after the acquisition last autumn, but I'm sorry, uh, I'd love to be there, but I can't, and I'd like you to share with the audience there, I, I convey my apologies because I have to do my artwork in Mexico, so I'll say two things not on her behalf, but just to maybe get the ball rolling. I know it's your habit also to talk about what others do. Uh, so maybe we can start by talking about Louis, and that will be part of my introduction as well, this relationship between the viewer and their images and with other forms of human life that are represented by these photographs. Today. Louis produced this image, for example, at a time where um, it wasn't really expected. She arrived in Lebanon um, to work on a commission there, and she asked for a flight ticket that would allow her to discover the country. Uh, on a personal basis before starting work on that commission. And on Sunday afternoon, she's on the beach in Beirut having a good time. She met Nadine and her family, a family who, like her, were having a, a rest, um, a chilling out on the beach. They got talking. Louise wasn't there to create a picture. She was looking for a picture opportunity. She just started talking to that family. Uh, they became friendly, and um, that friendship uh, motivated them to create this picture. I think it's a beautiful portrait where Nadine really contributes to her own a picture. They did it together. She's obviously posing. She, I believe, she expresses of great inner serenity. This picture she's giving about herself as a photographer. And after doing this, she shared the family's snacks on the beach, and they continued um, their time together into the evening. And that's a very beautiful example of friendship and sharing moments, which is typical of people in Beirut. So two different women with two different personalities, two different histories coming together. Uh, 
for this picture. So if I may, I'd like to give you the floor now so you can speak about some of your colleagues, Nina. Good evening to all. I would like to talk about Gilberto's work. And I strongly uh, encourage you to look at the pictures, the wall where all our images are on display here. I'm delighted to be able to talk about Gilberto's work because I think there are many potential links with my own art uh, on the photographs that are presented. You see a man carrying a bag that he uses in his work, I imagine, I suppose, um, could be wrong, and that's okay, I'm sure, but that's how I see it. Uh, this is uh, the repetition of Olympic type wrestling with all the whole ambiguity of violence represented here at most love also. So that's what I would say very briefly about this picture. Hello. Good evening. I would like to talk about Sebastian's work. What really struck me and inspired me is the fact that he looked for a enclave, a territory which in this instance is in Corsica, I think you said that you were born there, and you then returned to Corsica a few years later with your uh, new approach as a photographer. So there's a series of images here which questions the relationship of this territory uh, with its surroundings. The, it's sort of between an enclave between the mountains and the sea. Transport or means of transportation are very limited. Sometimes they don't exist. And that's a quest here uh, to see how the young generation are able to move around and possibly just to live in a different location on the island, if I'm not mistaken. Can you hear me? Good evening. I'd like to talk about Nina's work. It's about rural life. Like in the countryside, agriculture. In this, uh, she stages scenes with images that could come across slightly anachronical because there's heavy agricultural tools seem to belong to the past at first sight. I'd like to talk about Carly's work. I only just discovered her art, and I'll do my best to describe it as best I can. My first impressions when I discovered these images are that in, in your text, uh, you talk about using photographic uh, media as a neutral tool, and your pictures have this uh, in temporal uh, feature. The use of color is very subtle. It could almost be seen as black and white. Or single tone pictures. What I immediately thought of is uh, Mike Mandel's work, Evidence. In your text, you talk about the 21st century. And we have these interlinkages between different periods of time. These three images on the right, you have uh, the jellyfish on the sand. And if I'm not mistaken, that's a species that was already in existence when dinosaurs were roaming the planet. And then you've got a picture where nitrogen allows us to preserve species 
So there's an echo up here. And then on the left, you've got the Google building in the Silicon Valley, which is very much present in this series. Yeah, it's shown in a very subtle way because it's half hidden behind the sort of theatrical uh, tree uh, set. It has glass uh, windows or facade made of glass, uh, which also uh, echoes the previous images. Entrez par vos prises de parole en parlant de vos collègues. J'ai beaucoup apprécié qu'on commence comme ça. Qui plus est, on connaît la générosité de ceux qui ont d'autres manifester leur leur curiosité, leurs leurs différents engagements. C'est ton cas, Sébastien. We know about artists through their interests, of course. Puisque Je ne pensais pas en parler forcément, mais tu as créé un festival. Je ne pensais pas en parler forcément, mais tu as créé un festival de micro-festival à Corsica, parce que tu étais né là et tu es retourné à Corsica pour vivre là et travailler là. Et that's an interesting piece of information for us. A lot of artists create events, become curators. Uh, Ethics, professionals, researchers, and they do this as a way to get a community sharing this with the community of viewers and take up a position uh, sharing what they like, what they love. I think that's what you do. I don't know if you want to talk about it. I also discovered the results of your research work in a beautiful exhibition that took place in Marseille, where your work was beautifully presented. So could you please explain to us how you came back to this issue of locations, locations that you all rediscovered as part of this Aura series? This series happened after the end of my studies where I left uh, 17 to study photography on mainland France and every time I had an opportunity to come back to Corsica, a new prism uh, happened which evolved uh, through my multiple visits back to Corsica. So naturally, uh, at the end of my studies, eight years later, this wish to document this place. This is a documentary, but it's also a sentimental, uh, sentimental contribution, emotions, personal emotions. So I went back to places that were almost a secret location shown to me by my parents or that I chanced upon with friends. I revisited those places and it was as though I'd met long lost friends again. This time, of course, this happened through the prism of my um, approach as a photographer. This is, again, the documentary because it's part of the present, but also poetic. I see this place where often you turn away from the sea. I've tried to not cover those typical postcard pictures of the sea, which are very widely documented already by Corsica. But I focused instead on something else, uh, these plants uh, that we used to uh, pull out of the ground when I was going to school as a boy because they were considered harmful. Now they're protected, uh, they uh, grow in the rocks, and they actually protect the sand dunes from the waves. So I focused on this, I started this in 2019, and I'm still doing this work. À, à m'imaginer en fait euh, uh, interrompre 
Euh, je sais I pas can't see myself d'en faire un livre, par exemple. Uh, et, work, um, uh, you know, sometimes I might even uh, tout de même à I have et, uh, exhibited pour moi, uh, other pictures on multiple uh, occasions uh, already. Et uh, intègre au fur et à mesure uh, autant d'éléments minimales, végétales, photographiés comme s'il s'agissait également des membres de ma famille. Je the vegetation. Ici, ma femme, Manon. Uh, 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 embrace and include, just as I would, um, include members of my family. My wife is here on one of them. These are places that you can visit as a family. Uh, on the right, you have uh, something that my uncle built. It's a sort of a cabin. You've got who's buried in the sand in case you want to make a fire or uh, have a barbecue. Pour moi, questionner d'où les choses procèdent, d'où je viens, uh, what I'm doing here uh, is uh, I'm questioning se place ainsi dans le the passage. past, my uh, origins, why do I have this um, quand on était adolescent, uh, pour, uh, vivre vision, histoire, perception uh, of, of the location uh, un caché here. It's almost, uh, as I said, a secret uh, place uh, uh, where we just advise uh, uh, children. And there's also secret places uh, inside uh, a uh, territory, uh, a place, I call it, which is itself already quite secretive, quite hidden, the mountain and the sea. And a series of photographs that bringing to light the insularity of the place, as I see it, some sort of territorial intim intimacy. And at the same time, there's some sort of secret code, I believe, which is not trying to legitimate this personal history, but uh, which nevertheless is something essential to you. Am I right? These images, I create them. They ask me. A part of me is always in the picture. So there's always a need to preserve, to protect the intimacy. And we'll find this in every picture of the series. Dans un territoire finalement qui aurait des similitudes avec, euh, avec une très plus lointaine. Il y a showing là du, du voyage qui a beaucoup similarities with other remote locations. Euh, je voyais places I would just dream about as I was a teenager in Corsica. I used to see the world on the TV or in movies or books. I visited my first photography when I was 18. I used to fantasize about talking. De, de paysages lointains euh, se trouvaient directement au pas de ma part. Et ce, grâce euh, au cadre photographique, euh, à ces tranches de réalité, euh, à ce cadre serré euh, dans lequel je viens, euh, je ne vois pas les volets de mon champ, et de ce que je ne vois pas les à ces paysages qui se trouvaient euh, partout ailleurs, qui sont bien euh, pris, euh, dans, euh, dans, euh, dans, euh, dans mon euh, corps mental. Dans mon corps mental created in my native country. The choice of a vertical format, is that something you'd like to uh, elaborate about? Vertical formats, uh, not something I chose intentionally. I could have chosen black and white pictures as well. It's not a technical decision I made. It just came to me naturally throughout various experiments and quite rapidly when I was a student because I used vertical with focal lengths that prioritize the natural view of things to avoid what is spectacular or inversely um, very wide zooms. Je pourrais l'expliquer, mais elle me donne une certaine forme de singularité dans la série. Mais elle me donne cette série une singularité particulière, une qualité. Elle se réfère à la posture humaine, aussi, à ce que j'ai rencontré avec les objets que j'ai 
Et donc, someone from my family in the middle of this uh, natural environment. So you have the fig tree here or a door which are as much uh, of a character as my wife, for example. So this brings us to the next uh, artist on the wall. Uh, it's Nina, who's next. Uh, I'm not in a specific order, but there are similarities. When I listen to Nina, you, you watch in a very specific way. Researching in a very familiar place. Uh, it was your uncle's farm, wasn't it? Yes, it's a, it's a work in the long term, and Sebastian, I agree with you. I'm not sure it will be one day finished. It's a work around the agricultural foundation um, of my uncle, who is a dairy farmer in Ardèche, and this work has a double four with a set of photos of an artistic work, but also a whole work going about um, the rural representation of the rural farms of the 19th century. And for me, it was very important to document this family place which nourished, uh, which built my um, photographic perspective. It's the photography that made me go from the interest towards um, the field to see my uncle at work and then which motivated the four years of work together with him. And um, one of the this photography of the gleaners that you know, uh, which is in Musée d'Orsay, in a bigger version than this, which is in the end of someone from my family. And uh, that was the beginning of this work, because this 19th century, these images and representations, they still wait in the agricultural world which still seems always taken by this impression to work the fields. And uh, this picture represents at the end something very different. The poor workers, which don't go in after they've done the harvest. And at the end, uh, the photography of my uncle that we see who's holding this yoke, this, uh, this series uh, that are presented, they represent my uncle and me. By the way, the two pictures that go well together, where my uncle also becomes a photographer when he's taking a photo of me. And so this is the inversion of work about who's working, who's doing what. And uh, those tools which are no more used at the farm, and um, all this uh, agricultural storytelling of gestures that are transmitted from one generation to another, and uh, of which you can feel the weight. I had uh, a feedback on the violence that it could evoke. So I would like to just uh, specify that those two pictures were done while we were laughing a lot. Because it, it was also a game to say, what if we put the ink on us? What would that feel? And to regards the roles that I would do that too, that my uncle would take photography, and that in this uh, framework, and um, I've been presenting the different tools, different animals, all that makes a space built and told this idea of being able oneself to be the actor. And the other photographs that we can see here and that I called Dance Macabre also join this thing to tell you more about the work. Well, that, that's it. I think that's good. That's enough for me for now. Oui, donc c'est le travail 
So, the work also tells us a difficult situation of many people working on the fields. There is this notion of contract, which builds more than a line. The Bartleby situation, because despite all, the uncle works, but he refuses the alienation and the keeps on working in a relationship with a big agricultural group while refusing to sign the contract and affirming his freedom. Yes, indeed. Another starting point of this work was the moment when I I knew from my uncle that since many years he was refusing to sign a contract with Danone while he was still doing uh, the dairy for Danone. And this vacant space, which was a strong gesture representing the signature of powerful things, and this white space free of a contract was a space that opened up so that we together could write down and this, work, fait, this work and uh, uh, indeed uh, I have the impression that uh, by replacing this contract with a multinational moi, there was a contract between me and him uh, to do this artistic uh, work de, together un, un qui a, pas besoin signé ou a contract, signé that contract that doesn't need to be signed or, um, de, or be written a silent contract confidence of love, uh, a country that exists because it is my uncle and we love each other and that we wanted to think together. And it's, it was also a way of uh, asking oneself, what can we do on a territory when we do not sign at the bottom of a contract? Are there other forms of writing? During this work, we used the GPS tracers. I've asked my uncle to take a GPS um, during several days in the summer. Um, the traces that we got during moves were like signatures during a contract at a scale of um, an agricultural exploitation of a farm. Uh, like a signature can be proof, de son this can be a proof uh, of uh, lieu, his commitment to a place, uh, to a way of working uh, towards uh, animals uh, that he's taken uh, care of. To go back to the 19th century, uh, in this work, I was brought to, to also encounter different contracts and different farms where there were no signatures either because they could not sign at the time they could not write so people were signing for them and I seen very loose writings of um, agriculturists who could not write their name and in this polarity about the importance of signing a contract for an agricultural in the 19th century to say I also can uh, leave uh, something in history and the paper archive will also bring my voice forward and today the refusal to sign that can be stronger to get out of the story at the point that was for me the two polarities of this work and in this uh, collaborative uh, moments. Uh, he was looking at his niece working at the farm, working on the research, not only taking pictures, but also writing and contributing to the works of the farm. Her uncle found in himself some creative artistic period. Also with the GPS, he wrote in this landscape your name. Indeed, there were many moments like this where he could himself, um, thanks to our discussions and our work, to take time back from his contract to do things his way in the day and one day try to write my name in the fields. Fortunately, there are only four letters and it was a very beautiful gesture as well of signing but not of his, by his own name was the always oh, this inversion game and 
Il also offered me a big table made in wood, a wood from the farm in which I've written a part of this work. It was also a game of exchanging pieces, objects, and there was a video, a document video where I was a pregnant tractor and he was filming me. So all of those inversion games and at the end he films not well and I don't love me. You know, then that was a way of considering work differently by contrast which were not well completed. And we must say that all this work on the long term has produced a book that was published by Quinn Zagal, a very beautiful book that I recommend you, in which we can learn a lot about agricultural history through this peculiar story of Iran, but also by metonymy on all this unrepresented community or often ignored in representations or stereotype. This book is beautiful in its construction, the articulation between text and image, and um, you are the, the author at the end of this beautiful text, which brings us knowledge about uh, a world largely ignored and to, to be discovered more. Donc, uh, just à côté de toi, Gilbert Nina, uh, sur ce mur du Knap ici à Paris Photo, il y a. Uh, On the wall of Knap, we we'll see the work of Gilberto avec, uh, next to Nina, uh, and we've done this acquisition uh, of five images, which. Uh, are part of this series. Here we see one artwork, but which resonates with the work of Nina, the representation of work, but also in this, in the period of work to invent other gestures which can affirm the struggle against alienation. Could you tell us how you could build your work in dialogue and collaboration with those people you represent? All right. Well, first, I would like to give the context um, of this series, which are happening in Bogotá, in Colombia. I am Colombian, and I was raised when I go into those places. So it's a market for professionals. My parents had a little shop, and uh, I was going together with my parents to find uh, some goods in this shop, and uh, I could see from my childhood those people who are on a big, big market, who every day bring those goods that the professionals buy. That's why we see people with bags who are posing, who are part of a setup with a big quantity of products because those products go to professional. And uh, since my childhood, I've seen those people who were spending all the day by waiting and uh, transporting, wearing those bags, uh, transporting them to the parking where people have a truck. And every time, Going back home, I'm trying to think about, uh, like you, I have memories and things that I would like to reactivate. And for me, the idea was really to speak to people, to those people, in order to ask them, what is doing this work? What does it represent for you? Even if informal work, it's something that they've been doing for years until their bodies could not sustain it anymore. And so the series is called En La Lucha. En La Lucha is the sentence which is an answer to a question when you ask, uh, how, what do you do? And uh, if uh, people are not feeling well, they reply, En La Lucha, which means we're struggling. So it's a positive answer to a situation which is not very pleasant, but they are still doing this work. And this sentence in our exchange has given a route to be able to speak about struggle and also about fight, fight sports. And uh, on many occasions, I could 
encounter those people on their places of work and we were talking about them and I was inspired by those um, sports, Olympic sports, and to rebuild this dynamic um, of um, uh, uh, the whole wrestling sports gestures which they have chosen, they've chosen the product, they've chosen the product that they've chosen they wanted to where and also chosen the places on the market where they wanted to do the setup and then we needed to negotiate with the market so that they could allow us to do pictures and we've had two hours to do the five setups and but everything was prepared imagined in advance and here you do not make it all but as a whole device with flashes and for me it's important that people become actors and they just do their ordinary gestures of work to create performances, sometimes choreography, and they talk about their emotions without showing them directly. This approach, a very peculiar approach that you have of the world of work and um, being able to represent work in collaboration with people who do it uh, by integrating them into the creative process, inviting them to reinvent in a shared creativity their presentation. This uh, goes all through your work uh, and uh, can be seen in different experiences also more recently in other more informal work where the expression of our current world with the uberization of work it's uh, something that we sustain and that we support at CNAP. Would you like to talk to us a bit? Talk to us a bit about it? Yes, during my whole artistic research, it, it is around forms of awareness related to work and how to build a different image, which is uh, not the one related to a very direct or glorifying of uh, the workers' world or the show's uh, um, work scarcity. And um, here, oh, the, the contemporary the work, I worked with some people who are delivering goods, um, delivering food, um, and um, those uh, delivery people, we uh, face all those migration problems in France with all the people who are who don't could not have the papers and who are working in, in as delivery boys and in Colombia on the place uh, we have uh, a whole system of precarity by uh, companies uh, because they are taking profit from this workforce in order to lower prices and pay the least possible. And uh, here it's the same in countries that I had, uh, for example, in Paris uh, during demonstrations and uh, and uh, people got me from going and meeting those people. They are working and they are paid, uh, so they're available. So I'm trying to meet people in there where they try to struggle for the legalization of their papers and uh, it's been written in the same logic uh, talk to me about uh, your work uh, i do not know anything about it so tell me your emotions about this activity that you do and in this way we are trying to build setups where the bodies show what they want to say and i'm opening this space for this person so that um, the person could perform with it his or her body what they're thinking and uh, i do not have choreography skills and i'm just trying to build with uh, each person their intention in the bodies with images that talk a bit differently about this um, invisible work sector the construction of images invites us indeed to observe the relationship in between the body and um, the work uh, with uh, those uh, very heavy objects and uh, i'm thinking about uh, 
Alan Scola and is performing other working conditions, uh, which means that rest in the work. Uh, is it the work that is it here to examine the, the work and its performance? And uh, why? Do you not represent the faces? It's very interesting what you say about uh, Alain Coulomb. My thesis was related to this. How do we represent today the different work sectors after the industrialization where we could not grab things and this uh, specificity of the current work um, is also um, contributing to its precarity today. And so I'm asking people systematically, do you want to show your face? I'm not forcing them to represent their faces. And 90% of the time, they prefer not to show their faces because in France, for example, with the delivered voice, so it's a lot of people without papers, and uh, they feel that in their work, they know it's not a very glorifying work, and they do not want to be associated with it. And without uh, wanting it, it make, makes me want to an observation of the bodies, of gestures, of the setup, and the faces give us the information which are completely different about the origin, which do not contribute to showing the, their activity. We are facing those bodies which are committed and which are in an action. Uh, which is not really productive, uh, it's not earning them any profit, but they are in this um, exercise to create something to talk about their activities. So we're talking about the metrics of representation and of a relationship that is in between you and them, or a image where we may go back to it, but thanks. And, um, Carly, I would like now to talk with you about your big research we grouped on the, the title A Matter of Chance, with the idea that uh, since the invention of photography, we have invented the world, we have invented a world, a world that accompanied um, the deployment of, of modernity of industrialization and invents in a world through photography potentially in 200 years. Photography is soon represented all the more today all the aspects of the world by all the photography acts. And this research addresses different places in the world, very specific, which are related to production modes. Production modes in an economy, an economy of knowledge or an economy of production of value. And with here in a triptych, which is just a sequence of a bigger set um, with an articulation and a rhythm in the hanging order in between images and their frequency places which uh, seem symbolic as well you will tell us how do you Bill, that's a feeling of recognizing a primitive form of life at the origin of uh, life here and so on Earth, the form of intelligence uh, inside the scientific gesture and uh, a building which represents the world in which we live today, a virtualized uh, the, the buildings. How was this research built? Yes, um, first, I would like to say that this series was born from a very strong feeling that our civilization was uh, shifting in this beginning of the 21st century towards a form of unknown, and that, that was related um, to the coming of digital, of screens, and omnipresence of uh, technical systems, to which uh, are forced on us and that are appearing every day more and more. I 
couru vers euh, la Silicon Valley. Naturally, it was uh, the Silicon Valley uh, that uh, is considered to be at the origin of this new, new age. And so I went to photograph this building, the Google building, which uh, for me, through photography, was transforming into a uh, screen, a reflecting screen, which did, doesn't leave any um, observation possible about what's happening inside. And this series uh, is going through the different buildings from Silicon Valley, which constitute a sort of network, inside which other images are deployed, which belong to different areas of study of knowledge, like anthropology or zoology. And all of those disciplines, which at the end question us our origins and our evolution. I've really loved the, the presentation by Sebastian, who so the reference to evidence, and there are many references to the history of photography in this work. And also, the use of uh, images that, are, that were found, maybe we can show them a bit. Images uh, which uh, are learning images, which are coming from different archives, um, government archives, or bought in collections on eBay. And uh, often uh, those are perspectives which, um, like magic lanterns, um, the glass um, that was projected in the beginning of uh, the 19th century and at the end of the 18th to be able to discover the world at the time people could not travel. So, I consider them as uh, images that have structured our imaginary, our collective imaginary. And when you take them out of their or original context, they bring a form of strangeness and at the same time, Something artificial, you can feel the illusion that brings us to create links in between those images. Asking ourselves, why are they brought together? Her articulated images compose in sequences, sentences, in some way with also a very short um, indications in the title, they are asking us to have more attention. I was citing quoting Isabel Stenger in the title of this proposition that is bringing you together to find back the ways through the photography to pay attention to forms of life, human or not human, that we do not look at anymore or that we, do, we think we control. Also through photography, this sequence uh, is bringing us uh, the observers, uh, active observers, in the articulations in between those images, uh, which uh, have this uh, enigmatic description. Yes, they form a sort of visual puzzle that uh, the observer has to resolve, and uh, they always show the relationship between the human and his environment and is a way of um, trying to control it, to dominate it or exploit it. Like uh, when the human tries to 
transform it into its um, purchase with value. It's like archaeology groups on the way of um, society. Which guides us. We talked about the book with Nina as well, and uh, the book is also important in photography practice. Yes, the book is important because it allows to show a whole set of work to articulate images, to repeat them. They are going back, they are shown several times, and uh, you were talking about the language of sentences. And they are like words, consider them as generic images, they bring forward ideas or other images, and they guide the, a speech. And for me, what I love about photography is that it allows us to create a new set, um, to bring together things which are very uh, far away in reality and which uh, belong to different times. And those profound images, they allow to me to place our age into a larger time to mention ancient civilizations which appeared 3,000 years ago, forms of life which preceded us, which were there hundreds of thousands of years ago. And photography also shows us a space a larger, broader space to show us things that are only advisable through photography, like microscopic photography with an electronic microscope. They're not present here, but they're also part of the set for photographs of uh, astronomy of the sun, which also allow us to be brought into a bigger time period and a bigger universe and question of position in the universe and our link with this uh, life and this which invites us through our different individual interests, our readings, our angles of view of the world uh, to think differently about some things that we think we know or imagine the extra, uh, different dimensions of our capitalist history. So there are different ways um, to look at this. Um, and yes, a lot of uh, very diverse parallel storytellings in order to find the door of entry, and that's a common form imaginary and subjectivity to bring us to the ways that we've chosen. It's interesting to think that, that photography, which is originally a document and, uh, that can take uh, this documentary form, and with you giving you this um, documentary strength, also can produce uh, a singular property, allowing a uh, singular poetry, allowing ourselves to find the sources or possibilities of poetry. And uh, photography was long defined as something closed, and uh, you presented to us as uh, possibly opening up. Yes, um, I would like to share this desire of being able to understand and question the world. It's completely open, and the sets of images show a world in which um, the human has disappeared, he's only there through the traces that he leaves. And this brings us on uh, the humanistic um, humanism area and what's left of of us and our technologies. Indeed, it's, uh, it's a set of images on the possible absence of our species and what it leaves about our world. Thanks a lot to you all in this restricted time to be able to synthetically 
present to us uh, the scale of your research, which animates you, and that we love to get closer to. Thanks to you all to be able to listen very patiently. It's been one hour we're talking, and uh, if it's possible, if you would like to open up on some questions, uh, we're ready to answer to some of your questions. It's still possible right now, if you would like to. Maybe we can also continue this and pursue this. Je ne chercherai pas à faire une conclusion. Je crois que nous nous avons nous avons fait qu'ébaucher le, le dialogue entre vous, entre vous et, et moi. Et, Just to start at this dialogue, in fact, and between you and Knapp and the whole community of observers. Thanks a lot for this contribution to the reinvention of photography, because we hear it, so that they, if there were taboos, uh, an image can be um, as constructed and negotiated today, and as work and the setup performed very intimate. And we are seeing a very beautiful moment of photography today on this stage, French stage, rich of singularities that you individually represent. And I would like to really thank you for allowing us to be alive in this in this work. Thank you.